A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. So last time around we worked on this matrix over here. We calculated its determinant and it turned out quite nicely and you really enjoyed the video. And someone commented another matrix down there below where we have to find as a challenge problem also the determinant. This one right here with complex entries. It's basically the same matrix as before, so the same structure where we have ones on the main diagonal and on the non-main diagonals we have i's, so complex entries. And it's going to be an improvised session because I kind of know what I have to do already and we'll see if we can prove a basic structure or general structure by induction. And I hope you're going to enjoy the video, try it out for yourself and keep watching the video for the hopefully solution. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. Has anyone debt in the last five years? I don't know. So check it out. More information at the end of the video. It's worth it. They provide a great service to the STEM community. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to do before using induction on this whole thing is just check for base cases. So A1, A2 and so on. So the determinant of A1, when this right here is just An, um, it's going to be very simple. It's just going to be the absolute value of 1. It's just this 1 by 1 matrix and it's going to be 1. Okay, that was easy. Now, what is A2? The determinant of A2 is going to be this matrix right here. So we are going to have 1 and 1, i and i here. And this is going to get us uh, to 1 squared minus i squared. So this is 1 minus minus 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Oh, is this a generating matrix for natural numbers? 1, 2. Let us check the next one. Um, determinant of A3. This is going to be 1, 1, 1, i, 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 0, 0. So by using the rule of Saru, <laughs> um, it's going to be 1, and then 0, and 0, then minus 0, i, i, 1, so minus i squared, which is negative 1, so plus 1. And then we are going to get i i 1 is plus 1. Oh yeah, it seems so. 1, 2 and 3. So I think I got an induction hypothesis here. Um, we are going to suppose that the determinant of a n is equal to n. I think this is the best guess that we can have right here, right now. That is very cool. A generating matrix for natural numbers. <laughs> it's like a counting matrix if you do the, the determinant. That is cool. So we're going to suppose that the determinant of An is equal to N. And now we are going to do the induction step. So we are going to take a look at the determinant of An plus 1. And that's just the determinant of this matrix right here. So 1, I, I. 1, 1, and so on. 1, i, i, uh, and then we have zeros here. 0, 0, and so on. And that's it. Absolute values. Okay, perfect. So we got the basic structure down. Just like last time, we are going to use Laplace algorithm to reduce everything. So we are going to remember the signs right here, plus, minus, plus, and so on. And then we are going to take the determinants and reduce the dimensions by one. So we are going to have one times the matrix that is still left right here, which is just going to be the reduced matrix, just like in the last video. So we have one times the determinant of, and this right here is going to be a n. And next up, we are going to have minus i times the determinant of and the matrix which is going to be left here. So we're going to have i and then zeros here. And then this right here covered up. We are going to have i and 1. Now I need to think we have 1s on all of here. 
so once on the main diagonal, then here, and then we are going to have an eye adjacent to it. And all of that other stuff is going to be zero, zero. Okay, perfect. Just like last time, I just need to think that I don't mess anything up. Okay, so by the induction hypothesis, this right here is just n. We are going to make use of it. And then negative i times what we got here. And now we are going to use Laplace algorithm once again. Don't forget, this right here now has dimension um, of this matrix A is going to be equal to n. So we are going to reduce it by Laplace algorithm by 1 once again, meaning we are going to take... Um, this matrix right here and then we can just go downwards it really doesn't matter if we go column wise or line wise um okay so we're going to end up with um n times no n minus this is equal to n minus i times and then we are going to have the determinant of the corresponding matrix here with a sign of plus once again and we're going to have i as our um, factor in the front so i times the matrix which is still left here which is going to be just the original matrix once again but with dimension n minus one by reducing it um so we're going to have i times and then the determinant of a n minus one and then minus, if we cover all of this up, and then we are going to go down here, so plus, minus, plus, and so on. By Laplace algorithm, all of the other ones, all of the other entries are going to be equal to zero because it's zero times the corresponding determinant and so on and all of those zero. So, overall, plus zero. This is nicely reduced. So this right here by the induction hypothesis is going to be n minus one giving us overall i times i is negative 1. Negative and negative becomes positive. So this is n plus n minus 1. And this is 2n minus 1. Um, nope. <laughs> By induction, we should have shown by now that we end up with n plus 1 by the induction hypothesis, by making use of the induction hypothesis. n plus 1 is obviously not equal to 2n minus 1. So we done goofed here. Um, I either messed something up on the calculations here, but I'm pretty certain that I did everything right because it's the same structure as the matrix that we did previously and complex arguments or complex entries don't make any difference here uh, when it comes to the Laplace algorithm because the complex numbers form a vector field. Um, so the only option is that our induction hypothesis is wrong. Maybe I should take a look at A4. Um, so A4 is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, I, 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 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, let us compute everything by using Laplace algorithm once again. So we are going to have 1 times A, the, yeah, 1 times the determinant of A3. And then minus i times the determinant of what's still here. So i, 0, 0, and then all of the stuff here, this block over here. So i, 0, 1, i, i, 1. This right here is going to be equal to 3. So we are going to end up with 3 minus i times, and then just like the procedure that we did here. So we are going to get i times the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, which is A2. And then minus 0, because all the other stuff is going to cancel out. A2 is going to be equal to 2. This is what we found out. So we are going to end up with 3 minus, minus 1 plus 2 is equal to 5. You son of a bitch! 
You! <laughs> this is even better than a counting determinant. That is cool. I should have noticed. Yeah, obviously. Oh, that is very cool. So notice what's happening here. So what we end up with is a4 is equal to the determinant of a3. And due to i times i being equal to positive 1, the negative cancels out, to plus the determinant of a2. We had the same thing here. We had a n as our first one. And then we had minus minus determinant of a n minus 1. So in the general case, we end up with a n plus 1 is equal to the determinant of a n plus the determinant of a n minus 1. That's Fibonacci, bitch. Science, bitch. <laughs> that is very cool. This right here is a generating matrix for Fibonacci numbers. That is freaking cool. So, in general, so ignore all of the induction that we did here. Since this right here holds, we have shown it in the general case right now. This ends up to being Fibonacci. Um, oh, Lord. Um, give me a second. So I suppose, I, I hope that's right. If, if not, um, I'm going to have an annotation here. So the determinant of a n is equal to the golden ratio to the n plus one power minus the golden ratio conjugate to the n plus one power divided by square root of five when it comes to the nth Fibonacci number. So this right here is the nth Fibonacci number. And I think this right here was the formula um, where the golden ratio obviously is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 and the golden ratio conjugate is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So that should check out. Um, this right here is my final answer. I'm going to lock this in. And I think that was a very, very cool challenge problem. I thank you very much for that. This actually took a cool turn because I thought it was just a counting function, but it turned out to be Fibonacci. This is, a re this is a representation I have not seen before. That was very cool. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more mathematics, matrices, linear algebra, and so on, then the contents of today's sponsor brain might be the perfect fit for you. Now that we are here already, Fibonacci, is very cool when it comes to the visual representation. It's just the ratio of two sides in a rectangle and that's even a cooler ratio than the square root of two ratio that you find on an A4 piece of paper. And visualizations like those are very important in mathematics. This right here is pretty abstract. We have some wild bar files flying around here and it's something that most people can imagine in their head but when they see the Fibonacci spiral oh damn it all makes sense now kind of I suppose and this is where Prehend can really come in if you are a visual learner. Prehend with the nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, they provide you with some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. Their course concept is simple but very effective. Start off with any topic that you can think of, group theory or maybe forces in physics. They start off very slowly with a bunch of definitions and the like, but it gradually gets harder and they make it easy for you to bridge into those more abstract concepts by using their fabulous animations and visualizations. They are top tier and I seriously appreciate how they are able to pack all of those complex topics up into this bunch of visual representations and things that you can play around with using your own two hands and your mouse at home. Just take a look at any of the things that I'm showing you here right now. It, it really doesn't matter which course I pick. All of them look absolutely fabulous. Gorgeous animations, visualizations that really make it easy for you to learn something new on a daily basis, either on a mobile app or at home on, on your PC. So, if this feels like it's something for you, if I sparked your interest at least a tiny little bit, then make sure to use my linky down there at the top of the description, print.org slash flamdonefs, or my QR code somewhere up here in the corner to get free access to a big portion of print today. Free access to everything that you find over there on the website. And if it feels like you could 
turn this into a long-term relationship between you and the services, then definitely make sure to use my link in its entirety and get 20% off an annual plan subscription. It's seriously worth it. They update their website all the time, add new visualizations and brush up on old topics and make them even better than they are already. I don't know how that's possible, but they do so. It's absolutely fabulous. It's just gorgeous what they provide the STEM community with. And you should try it out today and join the brilliant journey with me and a lot of other users over on their website. So check it out and support the channel this way. And I thank guys for watching. That was a fun improvised session. A shorter one at that, but I really liked it. That was very cool. Subscribe to the channel and up until the next video. I wish you guys a fabulous day. See ya.